Hi, thank you for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. We are kicking off a new sermon series called Limitless. Today's message is entitled The Challenge, and it's based on Nehemiah chapter 1. The Life Notes are available for download at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah 1 is our text. If uh, you don't have a Bible or a Bible app, that's fine. Uh, All around you in the seats around you, there are Bibles. Grab one of those. Turn to page 468, and you'll be able to follow along. If you're at our Parker campus, then uh, there's a a Bible table in the back. You can get up right now and go grab one of those Bibles. Turn to page 468 and follow along. If you're joining us from your home and you don't have a Bible, I can't help you right now. But if you want one, you can message us and we will get you a Bible. We will send, send you a Bible. If, uh, if you're not living close by, if you're living close by, we'll deliver you one. If you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want to read God's Word, then please take one of those with you. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word and read God's Word because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, do you... Have you noticed that we live in a world full of limits? And and we don't like most of those limits. I mean, there are speed limits. They're not really suggestions. Just ask the officers. Um, (laughs) You got credit card limits. Uh, Most of them are too high anyway. Uh, There are parking limits. You're not allowed to park, uh, you know, in that handicapped spot. I know it's not, I'm not supposed to use that word anymore. Accessible spot, uh, unless you've got the tag or the the hanging down thing on your mirror or something like that, right? And and now they they don't just have the handicapped spots where you can't park. Now they've got the click list spots, right? Like, and and you pull up in the parking lot and there's all these empty spots, but you can't park there because you're going in the store, Right? And then, you know, there's limits on places you can go. There's locked doors. There's restricted access. Even your internet has limits, right? Download speed limits. I don't like speed limits of any kind, but if you want to, you know, upgrade that, you can for a charge. Uh, We are limited by limits. What's interesting is I grew up in churches that loved limits, right? Can't dance. Can't go to movies. Can't play cards. Can't drink. And you especially can't hang out with those Christians who don't believe like we do. You know, it's interesting that churches who teach about the limitless God are more interested in building fences than teaching freedom. So today we're kicking off a brand new series called Limitless. Limitless. And I want you to know that with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And and don't take my word for it. Take Jesus' word for it because he's the one who said that. Now, he's having a conversation with his disciples who were freaking out because Jesus just had a conversation with the rich young ruler and said, hey, you need to go sell everything you have, give it to the poor and come follow me. And the guy walked away and said, I can't do that. And the disciples were like, well, Jesus, then who can be saved? This is impossible. And Jesus said, well, with men it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So the truth is, God can change your life. In fact, God can change anyone's life, no matter how broken, no matter how lost, no matter how despairing, no matter how depressed, no matter how angry or apathetic, God's power is limitless. And we need to understand that. Now, the Apostle Paul kind of put it another way, uh, and his way is is very poetic. It was a prayer that he was praying for the church in Ephesus. So in Ephesians 3, He says, now to him, he's talking about God, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine. Some translations have think, but I like imagine. According to the power at work within us, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. I mean, don't you like that? Now God is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think or imagine, and some of us are like, yeah, I lost my imagination in the third grade, so I I don't have much of one. And there's times I feel that way. There's times I think, well, golly, yeah, God can do that, but, you know, I don't expect him to. And then he does something tremendous, and then we kind of go, wow, I am blown away by what God can do. But I know he can do that. 
See, the reality is God can do more than any of us can imagine. More than we can uh, just dream. And he does it through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Now, when I say in us, let me be very, very clear. When you come to that place where you confess Jesus as your Lord, you surrender your life to Jesus, ask him to be your savior, ask him to forgive you of your sins, then God does this amazing thing. He puts the Holy Spirit in you. Every single believer in Jesus has the Holy Spirit. So when I say, when Paul says in us, he's talking about people who have surrendered to Jesus Christ. They are followers of Jesus Christ. They know him as Savior and Lord. So it's not just kind of like a universal thing, like there's a spark of divine in everyone. No, that's not true. There is the Holy Spirit in those who have surrendered to Jesus. And he has the power of God in us, in you, and in me, if you're a follower of Jesus. And guess what? He wants to do more than we can ask or imagine if it glorifies Jesus and builds his church. There's qualifiers to it. It's not just like your dreams and your hopes for what you want. It is about what God wants to do in this world, what the power of redemption, the power of hope, the power of life change at work in his people. So for five weeks, we're going to talk about God's limitless, life-changing power. And we're looking at the life of a man called Nehemiah. That's why I ask you to turn to the book of Nehemiah. It's named after him and what he does. Now, let me give you a little background because uh, we're going to walk through the first chapter to, uh, today. But the background is this. Nehemiah was a Jew. He was born in captivity in 587 B.C., uh, the king of Babylon had attacked Jerusalem, had attacked the, the nation of Israel, uh, Judah at that time, ha and had conquered them, and he took away their leaders. He took away the, the kings, the princes, everyone educated, all the craftsmen, all, all the people who could do anything. He took them all to Babylon, and they were in captivity for 70 years. And then a king came up out of the Persian Empire who said, you guys can go home and rebuild your temple. And, and so they went and, and started doing that, and then people went back, and and all that. But this is like 140 years later. And uh, Nehemiah finds out that the walls of Jerusalem are still broken down and the, his people are suffering. It's embarrassing. So he, uh, he says, okay, I'm gonna, uh, you know, fast and pray about this. And then he asks the king, can he, can he go and rebuild the walls? And the king gives him favor. And then he goes to Jerusalem. He faces opposition. He rallies the people. And in 52 days, they build the walls that have been down for 140 years. Now, that's kind of cool, isn't it? That's, it? that's just evidence that God can take somebody uh, who is far away and he can do something amazing in them to accomplish something that nobody's been able to do for 140 years. No reason they couldn't do it. They just didn't do it. So, uh, but it all begins with a burden. It all begins with a burden. So today I want to ask, what is your burden? What is your burden? Nehemiah chapter one, beginning in verse one. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Chislev in the 20th year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped and who had survived the exile and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in, in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah is devastated by this news. So let's talk about Nehemiah's burden. Nehemiah gets this, this news from his brother about the, the people in Jerusalem and Nehemiah has a burden to rebuild the wall. Okay, that's his burden. He hears what's, where the situation they're in. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down. The gates are destroyed by fire, which means the city is defenseless, which means the people living there are at risk, which means there's no economic activity happening in the city because people aren't safe, which means that Jerusalem is a shell of what it used to be. I mean, this, it, it's just laid waste. I mean, people really didn't live there because it wasn't safe. You guys have been in neighborhoods you didn't want to live in, Right? Some of you have lived in neighborhoods you didn't want to live in, right? Well, that's, that's what the entire city of Jerusalem was like. Jerusalem was desolate, it was poor, and it was embarrassing to the people of God. And, and the Jewish people, because of that, were poor, and they were oppressed, and they were defenseless, and they were persecuted. And Nehemiah was burdened 
to do something to redeem that situation. So Nehemiah had a burden to rebuild the wall. Calvary's burden is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. That's what our burden is. That's been our driving reason for everything we've done for the last 20 years. Uh, it's why we have four services in Havasu. We have one service in Parker, uh, and they've been filling that place up. So great job. You guys keep inviting your friends. Uh, and, and, and we're looking to expand to a North Campus next year. Okay, because, you know, it's been happening. It's, it's why we celebrate life change. Uh, and, and most of that we're talking about is that which is declared in baptism. You know, I've, I've been sharing a lot about the numbers. I just want to frame this. You know, it's been, it, we're in our fourth year since the, the joyful 2020, ep, you know, pandemic kind of thing, right? When everything shut down and everything stopped and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and look, the pandemic was hard on churches. It's hard on everybody, but it's hard on churches. A lot of churches have died. They haven't recovered. I just want you to know what God did at Calvary during the pandemic and after. Since 2020, we have baptized 850 people. Isn't that amazing? I mean, when we hardly met in 2020, we baptized over 230 people just that year. And, and so God is like, you know, I, yeah, stuff's going on, but I'm still in the business of life change. And yet, I share those good news. I share those great statistics. And yet still in Lake Havasu City, there are over 40,000 unchurched people. In Parker, in the whole area of Parker, there's over 5,000 unchurched people. There's a need all around us. If every church in both our cities was full of all of people for every service they had, that's where those numbers come from. That's not counting our snowbird guests. That's not counting our, our you know, people who pass through. That's not counting all the, the rest of the people who show up for part of the year. That's just our permanent residence. So we have a mission field all around us and, and that's the burden. Uh, that, that's why right now they're in the process of finishing the Parker remodel so they can get into their own facility. It's not done yet, but soon. That's what they keep telling me, and I keep praying for sooner. Uh, you know, and, and look, here's what's going to happen in Parker. This is so cool. As soon as they get in there, they're going to have to go to two services. Isn't that cool? I hope you guys are rejoicing in Parker because we're rejoicing here at Sweetwater. Hey, you know, there, there are, and, and for Easter, they're probably gonna have to have three services. It's just, that, that's what God is doing in that place. Uh, that's why we're planning to build a mezzanine in this room, right here at Sweetwater. If you don't know what a mezzanine is, that's a fancy word for a balcony. That's right, the back section's gonna, you know, have that, uh, a balcony up there. You can really get farther away if you want to. Uh, but uh, look, we, we need to do it. We need to add seats so you guys can bring your friends and I know right now you guys are going, oh, we got seats in here. Yeah, come at 9.30. Well, actually, don't come at 9.30. Just <laughs> believe us. There's no room at 9.30. And, and guess what? 5 o'clock and, and 11 o'clock are filling up too. So we've got we to plan for that. We've got to do for that. By the way, that's why we're having the, the limitless dinners in February 15th, 16th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. It is because we're going to invite you to come to dinner so you can decide if you want to participate in helping us to build that stuff. You go, wait, pastor, that sounds like you might talk about money. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are because, it, you know, uh, and by the way, we, ha we have a thousand spots for the dinners. There's about 3,000 people a week that either join us online or in person. And so everybody, we know everybody can't make it to the dinners, but if you really want to be part of us leading this community to a life-changing relationship with Jesus and Parker and Havasu, then come one of the nights, sign up for one of the nights. Come as a life group. Come with your friend group. You know, just come and hear and decide if you want to be a part of what God is doing. But we really want people to believe in the mission of life change and come. So Nehemiah had, had a burden that drove him to action. Calvary has a burden that fuels our mission. How do you want God to change your life? How do you want God to change your life? What is weighing heavy on your heart? What is your burden? What is frustrating you? What is breaking your heart? What is causing you to grieve in your life? How would you like to see God's limitless power unleashed in your life? Is it that you want to see a friend or a loved one uh, who doesn't know Jesus come to that place of trusting in Jesus? I know that's one of my burdens, Look, I'm burdened for the lost in Havasu and Parker, but uh, I'm also burdened for the lost in my own family. 
And it's something that it weighs heavy on my heart. It's one of the burdens I'm taking to God during this time and saying, God, I want to see this change. I've been praying for it for years, so might as well intensify. It, is it that you want your marriage to be healthier? And you, and you don't really want to speak it out loud because you feel like, hey, we're just kind of dragging along. We're doing okay, but it could be better. Or maybe it's not good at all. And you're like, are we going to make it? You can say, God, I want your power to change our lives, our marriage. Is it your children, their future, their lives, whether they're adults or whether they're kids? The choices they're making, the, the way they're living, the, you know, what is it that your, your burden is? Is it your finances or your physical health or just the fact that you don't have a purpose? What's your burden? Maybe your burden is a habit or an addiction that is pulling you away from God and poisoning your soul. See, but if you have a burden and you come to God and you say, God, I want you to change my life and you begin to take action like Nehemiah took action, God will show up in powerful ways. Now, I really want you to wrestle with that question in these coming days. I want you and God to have a conversation where you just simply say, God, uh, I really want you to change my life in this way. I want, I want you and the Holy Spirit to have a conversation uh, about your life and about where your burden is and what needs to change. And please don't pretend like everything is good. Okay, oh yeah, I'm good, everything's fine, I don't need to change. Uh, you know, uh, you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. You can't follow Jesus and stay the same because, I mean, his, his call is always what? Follow me. Follow me. Come on, let's go someplace. And here's the cool thing. Jesus says, I'm gonna take you to heaven, but he doesn't tell us about the journey in between, except we're supposed to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him and people are gonna hate us and there's gonna be persecution. Other than that, it doesn't say a thing. <laughs> except that it's worth it. It's worth it. So, you know, there's this dynamic call on our lives. And so don't sit back and go, I'm good, I'm fine, everything's fine. No, it's not. Are you the man, the woman, the child that God wants you to be right now in your life? So don't pretend everything is good, doesn't need to change. And, and just please don't be complacent or apathetic. See, one of, the, one of the lies Satan tells us is that nothing's gonna change. And so we don't try. We don't take action. I wonder how many times people had come from Jerusalem with a bad report and they told somebody and people said, that's too bad. And that was it. That was the end of it. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, we can't do anything about it. Let's just go back to our lives. Our lives are pretty good here in Persia. It's too bad Jerusalem is terrible. But Nehemiah hears it and he says, I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna do what I can to make things happen. So don't be complacent or apathetic. And please, please don't convince yourself or believe Satan that God's limitless power doesn't apply to you. Because I know how tempting it is to think, well, God can change other people's lives, but he can't change my life. God can do miracles in someone else's situation, but not in my situation. So God's power applies to you. And if you're struggling to believe that God can change your life, then I've got some people who want to share their story and convince you otherwise. So here, watch this video and be encouraged by what you see. Hi, my name is Daryl. I'm the prayer pastor here at Calvary. And here's just a short glimpse into my life of um, how I came to Jesus. I was raised in the church as a young child. Uh, walked away at around 16, 17 years old. Got very heavily involved in drugs uh, through the entertainment industry and through the music industry. And I never thought that I, my life could ever be restored until I truly met Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the person that is limitless in what he can do in our lives as he restored my life. I am living proof of what God can do and will do in your life if you will allow him to. Hi, I'm Jamie. I came to the Lord in 2019, but before that, I was heavily addicted to narcotic drugs. I was homeless on the streets, living a very empty and voidless life. After I came to Christ, everything in my life changed. I've gotten an amazing husband, my two older children back. He's restored my sanity. He has filled a void that existed in my heart that I did not 
no could be filled. There is life beyond what you're struggling with. His name is Jesus. Hello, my name is Amber Green. My husband and I were born and raised devoted Mormons. After my oldest son was born, my husband decided that he wanted to leave the Mormon church. For about three years, it felt like the world was crashing in on me. Our marriage almost didn't even make it. The love of God pulled me out of religion, opened my eyes, and he revealed himself through the Bible and showed me what grace really meant. Where I once believed that I had to work my way into God's kingdom, I now know that it is through Jesus Christ's sacrifice and His alone that I am saved, and not by my works. I now get to lead people into worshiping the living God, not because I have to, but because I get to and share the love and His power and what He's done for me in my life. God has set me free from religion, and He can do the same for you. Hi, Calvary. I'm Patrick, your recovery pastor. You know, before I was your recovery pastor, I was an addict. I was living two different lives, one of duplicity, infidelity, and substance abuse. And uh, eventually, I decided to stop doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, and I stepped out of denial. When I stepped out of denial, I decided that it was time to start living like the life that I was portraying on the outside. The guy that went to church, the guy that was a family man, that was a professional, I decided to take the, the, the first real step in surrendering my life to Christ and letting Him change me from the inside out. When I did that, He restored my marriage, He restored my relationships, He gave me purpose, and now He's given me the ability to do ministry uh, here with you guys. So can I tell you that if you're at the end of your rope, if you feel like you don't know what to do next, give God a chance. He will change your life and you can live with purpose too. Hi, my name is Valerie, and about six years ago, I walked through a transformative process. I was an opiate addict. I've been convicted of three felonies, and today, because of God's limitless power, I'm living the life I never could dream of. Um, God's restored my family. He's restored my relationship with Him, and He's given me a new hope for a future. So if you think all is lost, it isn't. God can heal anybody anytime, anywhere, all you have to do is trust Him. So do you guys believe that God can change anybody's life now? Yes. Okay, do you believe He can change your life? Yes. Okay, well, you just shared that on the screen, so yeah. <laughs> See, God can do more than you ask or imagine, so I'm daring you to ask. And that brings us to the challenge. I want to keep reading Nehemiah uh, chapter 1, picking back up at verse 4. It says, As soon as Nehemiah heard these words, he goes, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We've acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though you're outcast in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. There your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was cupbearer to the king. Now, the challenge is this. Nehemiah began his journey of living out God's limitless power by, you know, by, by bringing his burden to God out of the brokenness uh, of his heart. I, I mean, he was broken he was for this burden of Jerusalem. And he said, God, I want you to do something about this. God, I want you to change us to change the situation. And so I want to challenge us to follow Nehemiah's example for the next 28 days. 
Okay, this series is five weekends. Uh, this is the first one. The last one will be 28 days from now. So uh, I'm going to challenge Calvary to take on this, this whole limitless challenge for you personally. Okay, I can't make the choice for you. I'm just simply encouraging you to do that. Uh, and, and, and in the process of that, we're saying, God, we want you to change our lives. God, I want you to change my life. Here's my burden. Whatever your burden is, here's my burden. I already told you part of what mine is, and that's the, the lost of Lake Havasu City. The people who don't know Jesus in Parker, the people who are tuning in online who are far from God. It, though, that's my burden. I want to see us, uh, I want to see God do something through us that, that impacts our communities in a way that all we can do is say, that's God. That's God. Okay, that's, that's my number one burden. But what is your burden? What is it that you are burdened by? So what did Nehemiah do? Here's the challenge that, that I'm going to ask. First of all, Nehemiah uh, confessed and repented. Okay? Confession and repentance. He acknowledged the sins of his people, and he acknowledged his sins. And then he committed to a different way of living. Now, see, this is where life change begins. I don't know if you realize that or not, but life change begins when we admit that we are wrong and that we need God to make sense out of our lives. It's just when we say, God, I can't do this my, on my own. I've messed up. I've disobeyed. Uh, I've wrecked my life. And we name our rebellion and we commit to obedience. We say, God, I want to follow you. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, we've already talked about this, you did that once. You said, God, I'm yours and I can't do this without you and I surrendered. But there are some of you that haven't ever done that. You've never said, Jesus, I need you, and I've messed up, and I want you to forgive me, and I want you to save me, and, and I want you to change my life. And you were watching the videos, and you were saying, wow, I, I, can God really do that in my life? And the answer is, he can. And if you're sitting in any of our campuses, and you're watching us online, and you want to talk to someone about what it means to experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus, we're available. We have prayer teams at all of our campuses, we have pastors that are available to talk with you. We, we encourage you to grab a Connect card and fill it out and say, I want to talk to somebody. Message the service host or email us at calvaryaz.com. We will be glad to have that conversation with you. I've already told you, that's why we do what we do. So if you haven't ever done that, some of you need to do that for the first time. Some of you have done this, but not recently. And you know who you are. You might be considered a good, faithful Christian by your friends, a good guy or, or a great lady, and, and you go to church, and yet inside you just kind of feel like you're going through the motions. And you haven't tasted the power of God in your life in a long time. You haven't experienced that, that presence of God in your life in a long time, and, and you kind of go, wow, I would like to experience that again. I would like to have that again. Or maybe I'd like to have that for the first time, and, and I know it's real, but I, I don't experience it myself. Then, then now's the time to, to start doing that. To say, God, I need you, and I, here's, here's where my life is a mess. See, if you don't do this, if, if confession and repentance isn't part of your life, you're going to miss out on God's power. You're going to miss out on God's peace. You're going to miss out on joy and purpose. You see, this was the beginning point of your relationship with Jesus. But it's actually required to actively follow him in this journey. So confession and repentance is where he started. And then fasting and praying. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Fasting and praying. Uh, and here's my challenge. I want us, as a church, as many people as do it, to fast and pray for 28 days. Some of you are like, we don't like fasting. Can we just pray? No. Okay, look, I'm not asking you to go without food for 28 days. Here's, here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Because some of you, by the way, some of you I know have probably never uh, spiritually fasted. I know some of you are like, intermittent fasting. I'm good at this. Let's go. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about fasting to lose weight or be healthy or anything like that. We're talking about spiritual fasting, which means, you know, in the biblical context, that you give up food for Jesus. 
You give up food for God. And, and, and why do you do that? Because it's a sacrifice. You're denying yourself. But you're saying, God, this is, I'm serious about this, and I really want you to hear this prayer. Does that mean he hears it better? I mean, he hears all our prayers. Uh, it just means he knows you're taking this seriously. And, and so I'm, I'm just going to challenge you, if you've never fasted, fast one meal a week. If, if you want to take the, the bigger challenge, fast one day a week for the next four weeks. So if you're going to take the, the easy challenge, four meals over the next four weeks. And, and during that meal that you skip, use that time to pray and read your Bible. You might do it with someone else. You might just do it by yourself. But instead of eating, and, and by the way, when you get hungry during that day, uh, or when you skip that meal, then just pray for what's burdening you that you're fasting for in the first place. Does that make sense? Okay, so it, it doesn't make you a holier person, but it does invite God into your life in a very tangible way. By the way, the people that were fasting in Jesus' day, the people who were fasting in Nehemiah's day, they didn't have food readily avail available all the time. So like most of them ate one meal a day anyway, and when they fasted a meal, they fasted for the day, and they weren't sure they were gonna have food tomorrow. We've got so much food lined up, we can go get it. We're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna fast one meal, and then I'm gonna go pig out. Now, that's because we we're the first people who ever live in a society where we have too much food, and, and we pay more to eat less. So uh, not only do I wanna challenge you to fast uh, with food, I wanna challenge you to fast from something that's valuable to you for the next 28 days. Every day, the whole month. And, and when I say something valuable, okay, I'm not gonna fast from Brussels sprouts and coffee <laughs> because I don't do either one of those, okay? That would not be a sacrifice at all. Uh, a sacrifice is me fasting from ice cream and all sweets for 28 days. Me fasting from Diet Pepsi and all Diet Soda for 28 days. Me fasting from my, you know, word games, like words with friends for 28 days. And by the way, I'm doing all three of those for the next 28 days. And, and uh, actually, longer than that, because I, I preach Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, so it's going to be a little bit longer. But see, here's the thing. It's, and I share that with you, not because I want, oh, look what Pastor Chad's doing. I want to challenge you to do this with me. To say, God, we want you to be more real in our life than ever before. We want to experience you more than ever before. We want you to change our life, whatever your burden is. So do you want to experience God's power? Yes. I'm glad some of you do. So here's the thing. If you want to experience God's power, prepare for it. Prepare for it. You're going to hear more about Nehemiah, but he got ready before he ever took his first step of, of activity, he was praying and fasting for God to do something. I'm inviting you into that. Uh, so uh, I already told you, fast one meal a week uh, uh, and pray instead of eating. Uh, fast from something that you value all 28 days. Make it something that you actually care about. And every time you want to, look, I already looked at my phone today like 27 times and went, oh, I can't play the game. So I prayed for what my burden is. That, that's how it works. It's a reminder that we need God. And then the prayer part. I want to challenge you to read at least one chapter of the Bible every day. And, and in the life notes, you've got a reading plan, one chapter a day. And, and, uh, and some of you are reading through the Bible and you've got, you got, you're reading four or five chapters a day. That's great. Keep that up. These are different chapters. So I'm going to encourage you, if you're going to do this, do it with your life group. Uh, do it, uh, you know, provides accountability. Share what you're giving up to. That'll be fun that way. If you have kids at home, do this as a family. Read the, the passage and pray and pray for what your burden is as a family. Or maybe as a couple, read and pray together for your burden because this is an excellent opportunity for relational reset. You see, this is the challenge of Nehemiah. This is a challenge of limitless and the choice is ours. Do we accept the challenge or do we ignore it? Nehemiah took on the challenge and God demonstrated his miraculous power through Nehemiah's life. Amazing things. I believe if you embrace the challenge, you will experience God's power in your life too. And that is what I wanna see happen in your life and in the life of Calvary. 
Let's pray. Father, thank you for challenging us. You know that we're capable of so much more, that we can love better, we can forgive more, we can serve, uh, we can sacrifice. God, and, and so we just simply acknowledge that we need you. And God, some of this challenge is overwhelming and some of it is a little bit scary, uh, but we know that, that with you all things are possible and that you can do more than we ever ask or dream possible. So right now we're bringing our dreams to you, we're bringing our imagination to you, we're bringing our hopes and desires and our burdens to you, asking that you would help us take a journey of life change. And God, I pray that every person uh, that's part of this uh, congregation, whatever campus, whatever online, that God, we would pick up this gauntlet and we would invite you to make a difference in our lives like never before so that we can be the church that sees Parker and Lake Havasu City come to faith like never before. We're yours. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, Jesus said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. So what is it that you want God to change in your life? I encourage you to be praying about that this week. If you'd like to support the ministry of Calvary, I'd like to encourage you to check us out on the web at calvaryaz.com. There you'll find out more about our church and have the opportunity to listen to past messages and connect with us. Well, that'll do it for today. I hope you'll join us again next week. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.